Hello, beautiful people. Here I am with the Cosmic Climate for the week of February 26th through March 3rd. This is a very special cosmic climate because I am literally in my pajamas recording this at 11.50 p.m. Sunday night. And there is such, there's a lot of energy around, right? And this is literally the only time that I feel I will have the peace, the quiet to connect with you all on the cosmic climate. So here I am. So if you see me kind of like, zoning out a little bit it is late here so that's why and actually oh my gosh I just gotta this is like the best purchase that I made recently oh my gosh <sighs> mm, so nice this is really dropping me in but it's been it's been a wild ride so I'm curious of how you all are feeling this week that we are coming out of has been a very intense, sweet, energetic week. I've been feeling it. I know a lot of you have been feeling it. And I really had a strong peak in insights coming through. And at the same time, emotional, physical, and mental pains and discomforts have been very high, just as high this week. So if you've been feeling that, you are not alone. And one of the things that I realized once I shifted out of this peak energy, peak momentum, is that there is a sunspot currently that is very active, right? So a spot on the sun has a lot of solar activity. And I don't always correlate the sun's activity to what I'm feeling and what's happening here on earth. I just communicate and share what comes forth, what I connect with intuitively. And so of course, if it resonates, you know, then it's for you, right? And <clears throat> so this particular solar activity really grabbed my attention because what has been shared and my main point of contact for my astronomy, current events and news is earthsky.org. It's such an amazing website and they do a really good job of communicating these astronomical events for like lay people, right? They are very like concise and clear and about, yeah, about the astronomy, right? And so I get their daily emails and I just happened to get this email and it was speaking about the solar activity. Well, the past two weeks, this specific sunspot has been pretty active and not this week that we're coming out of, but the previous week, there was a lot of activity within that spot. However, that spot was on the far end of the sun, on the far side of the sun. So it wasn't facing us directly. Now, due to the sun's rotation, it is now facing, it is facing us directly. And this week, it just so happened that this particular spot, sunspot has been having major flares. Uh, it's called like actually the X flares, the biggest X flares, which is the biggest solar flares that you can experience or that the sun may produce, which can lead to the coronal mass ejections that produce, you know, auroras and such. And that can also, you know, influence or um, I would say distort certain wavelengths of energy. And so what was it? Um, on February, I think it was between February 23rd and February 24th, there were, this is the record breaking or record making events where this particular sunspot had six flares, six really big flares in one short span of time, like within this 24 hour period. And I don't know about you guys, but I, I'm like, is this a coincidence? Is this a synchronicity? Like, are like, what are uh, coincidences anyway, right? So for me, I felt like, okay, something's going on here. And so if you have been feeling a way, let it be known that you are not alone. And um, I will be looking more into the activity of this particular sunspot. I feel very drawn to it. Right before I started recording, I checked in and it's still active. Now the big, big flares are not, have not been happening. I think it the last thing I read said it, there's about a 30% chance that the sun will produce the X flares and, you know, possibly produce the auroras. However, um, now it's just 
producing smaller flare ups. So we will see how that energy unfolds. And so before I get into the cosmic climate for this week, I just want to share that on March 3rd, so this coming Sunday, 1 p.m. Eastern time is the first meeting for the astrology study group that I'll be facilitating monthly. And in these groups, it's an hour and a half meeting live on Zoom. You come and you ask me any questions you desire about astrology. We can also have open discussions about the philosophy of astrology or the astronomy of astrology. We can talk more about this, the solar flares and the sunspots. We can discuss any questions that you like regarding astrology and I would say astronomy, right? And if you want to walk through chart examples and such, whatever it is that you desire, we can do in this space within this two hour time period. And so if this is something you'd be interested in, you can find the registration link in the description of this video. And I also want to share that I finally uploaded the manifestation with affirmations video that I've been talking about and saying I was going to share. I finally uploaded that. And so if you are in a space where you are desiring to manifest your desires, this particular technique that I utilize with the affirmations is like, it's, it's so simple and it's so profound and just generates I'm not even just saying this is like everyone's like instantaneous manifestation, but it really does. And there are two simple key components to this manifestation technique that I share in that video. So if you're interested in the video, I will also put a link in the description of this video and you can check that out, but I just uploaded it. So you should probably see it um, if you're watching this video. Awesome. So the energy of this week. Oh, man. I think I need to use this roller again. It's not, it, it, maybe it is, it could be intense, but it is definitely powerful, potent energy. You really can't make this up. Oh. Let me get under here too on my neck. Oh, my neck is just like, ooh, oh my gosh. <laughs> I swear I'm not even on anything. I'm just like, I'm in, I don't know where I am right now. I'm here with you guys recording Cosmic Climate. So thank you for being patient with me <laughs> with this very special Cosmic Climate. But nonetheless, the energy this week is very powerful, very potent. So the highlight of this week is Mercury Kazemi. So Mercury will align with the sun, which Mercury Kazemi means that Mercury is in the heart of the sun. Mercury will align with the sun at nine degrees of Pisces on February 28th. Then a few hours after that, Mercury will align with Saturn at nine degrees of Pisces. And then a few hours after that, the sun will align with Saturn at nine degrees Pisces. So we have three alignments or also consider conjunctions at nine degrees of Pisces on February 28th, 999. Nine, nine. The universe is so loud. Divine, the divine is so loud. Spirit guides, ancestors, something is happening, right? And this is a very powerful, powerful statement and vibration for this week. And so with Mercury Kazemi's, now I tend to put a lot more uh, focus and intention into Mercury retrograde Kazemi's because there's already this direction and natural flow of energy of introspection, reflection, refinement, and, and really coming inward to that inner voice and connecting and being very like still and communicating on these with these subtle, subtle energies, excuse me. And with Mercury Kazemi's, this one in particular, I feel, and just with the energy around, it's subtle communications, but it's very loud. It's very clear, I guess I should say. And so even though Mercury is not retrograde, there's still this coming into union with divine intelligence, that being the sun. And with that Pisces energy, this is Mercury in the sun in the essence of source energy. I see Pisces as the oneness, the compassion, the unconditional love, the essence of everything and nothing, right? Mercury, like our intellect, our conscious mind coming in union with our, our divine mind, our divine intelligence, right? And there's um, um, 
uh, um, a union of just what I'm getting is like the whole consciousness, right? And so what I've been speaking about recently is the activation of the crown chakra and the third eye chakra. So this to me feels absolutely like the crown uh, chakra being activated and stimulated, right? And so I'm going to get into the vibration of the nines, but I want to share first the oracle messages for this week. So the first, or I guess you could say dominant energy for this week is Saturn and Aries. I love, I love, love, love this card with the keyword here, risks, right? And so risks, the way this is coming forth is that there is there's a key here, right? There is prosperity, abundance, the things I've been talking about for year eight, but there are some secrets, some key elements, whatever this, these like coins here mean for you, right? Whether it's fruit, whether it's money, whether it's an opportunities, this is here, right? And the key is here. And what we are being guided to do is to essentially take a risk, right? And with this risk taking, there's also a guidance, right? To not overthink it, to trust and take your time. And, you know, just as I'm seeing here in the, the picture up top of the young boy with the bear, and this is like a brown bear, right? This could be like a grizzly bear. It's like, that is a risky move to just be like, you know, la 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 in front of this, with this grizzly bear here, where it's just like, it's no big deal. And just being like, in the essence of, of who it is that you are. And it's, you know, I'm, I'm staring at his face. Now his face looks a bit concerned. I don't know if you could pick up on that. So this is real life. <laughs> but also, just even this, um, I don't know what it's exactly called, but like the bag on the stick, right? Like if you are, um, on a trip, like if you're traveling, I can't think of like, I'm thinking of like hitchhiking, but that's not exactly what this is. Right. But you're on a journey. Right. And I'm thinking of basically about the full. And so it's something about, I'm, I'm just getting the vibe of trusting as you're taking a risk, trust that you are divinely protected. Right. And by trusting and believing and taking the risk, you are gaining the key right? You're gaining some sort of insight or information or some or a secret is revealed, right? And this key and this ability to take risks is giving you access to the tree of life, right? The tree of knowledge. And this here is just, it feels to me like a protective symbol. Like it's all like there is some sort of symbolism that is, that we're encouraged to decode here with these three, um, these three symbols, especially this one, because it seems like a bit of like almost like a remedy or not like a re not like a spell. But when you think about even voodoo, like voodoo dolls, right? I just think that there's like some sort of binding. Maybe that's it, binding, right? Where it's like this bear, it's an attack mode, but you're actually protected, right? So there might not be much to worry about here. And to even emphasize that protection energy, so the next oracle message for this week is the moon in Aries with literal, the literal key word here is protection, right? And so you have the, the mother energy, you have the tiger, and I feel like this gentle nature of the mother, this maternal energy <laughs> really encompasses this, this tiger within, right? Like the mama bear, you know, the, just like the fierce mother energy, maternal instinct, right? So doing, doing whatever it takes for something that you love for family, being able to be strong within that. And again, there's some elements of divine protection. There is, I feel our guides are around us protecting us like this mother maternal instinct this like feminine like soft feminine but strong power is present and so while we are experiencing these really intense shifts we are releasing a lot we're processing a lot we are raising our vibration right and it's something that we're doing and I feel right now with and even as I'm saying this I'm like now and moving into 
you know, the eclipse season, like maybe this is a little preview, who knows? I mean, we are seeing the moon in Aries here and this is all just coming through. There is an element of like, there's going to be intensity, but you got this, you're protected. You, your goal is to trust, trust and stay clear of, with, of your vision, like clarity of the mind. And this is the point of the activation of the crown chakra and the, and the ability to see, right? So not seeing with these eyes, but then seeing with the third eye, right? And as I say this, I'm just like, <laughs> oh my, this is so good because this stone, which is, you can't really tell, but it's, it's rose quartz. It is so, it's cold and it feels so good. I'm so glad I got this. Oh, oh my gosh. Okay. The third Oracle message for this week. And this is one of the cards that drew me to this deck. I saw this card and I was like, I gotta have this deck and you're gonna see why. But it is innovation with Jupiter and Aquarius. Now, this was my card because of the onx. I, okay, you guys probably know how much I love onx in Egyptian things, right? The Egyptian connection is very strong. And was interesting because I was like, are these all onx here? Like what's going on? Like there's one onk and then there's these three and it's like a innovative version of the onk, okay? Like basic interpretation, visual interpretation, right? Um, but what I like on the, with this card is that there's so much potential and it's like this infinite wisdom, infinite capabilities, like eternity is, is one of the words, like eternal energy. And with this, I'm feeling like with the infinity symbol here and just this, uh, I just, you gotta give me a second to like clearly connect with this, this energy. This essentially is this of Pluto and Aquarius energy I'm feeling. I feel like with Pluto and Aquarius, it's like, guess what friends, we're gonna have Aquarius season for 20 years. Are you ready? Like, this is freaking amazing. And this to me feels like with these two elements here, right? With knowing that you are, whoops, can never get this right. Okay. Knowing that you are divinely protected and being able to take some sort of risk, but with patience and with grace, you are gaining access to secrets, to, you know, prosperity, experiences, knowledge, wisdom, and like these ritual tools or sacred tools you're gaining access to. And by doing that, right, because I'm looking at these like pentacles here, these coins on the tree, I feel like this has something to do with that, right? Like I'm thinking about the wheel of fortune, things coming full circle. There's just the wheel is turning, things are shifting. And I like that it's almost like she caught this, right? With, with this, like this hook. And so it's like, that is like, we have this, this opportunity, like we have received some sort of eternal or infinite wisdom or the eternal life as we have here with the Ankh is essentially the key to life, right? So there's all these keys here and just this access to something divine, something expansive. So overall with this energy, you know, um, of these Oracle messages, I feel that, and oh, how did I not even point this out? One and one and 11. So literally 11, 11, like you cannot make this up friends. Like this is, this is wild. The universe is so loud and clear right now. And I'm, I'm so excited about it. And so with this specifically, with what I'm seeing here and this vibration of nine, this is pointing to the mastery of earthly lessons. The purpose, you could say one of the philosophical purposes of our experience here on earth as earthlings, right? And so again, bear with me. It's Aquarius season for 20 years. So you're going to hear me speak about things that might sound out there, right? Things that I discuss with myself or like close friends where I'm just like, oh, you know, I don't want to be like, you know, the quite crazy Aquarius person, but you might start hearing some of these things. And one of the things that I personally just 
resonate with and believe whether I know like I have proof or not, but I do believe that we choose to come to earth for some particular reason, right? And if we tend, like if we look at earth as a school, as many other planets, like existences and experiences on other planets, say Venus, say Mars, what have you, you know, in other different realms and dimensions, like these planets can be considered to be schools, like experiences, right? And where we, um, you could say even play with our divine abilities, our creative abilities, right? And so earth, and I'm not the one making this up, right? This is like definitely a perspective that's been around for like decades. And it's said that earth is like one of the hardest schools to, to, um, exist within or to experience because of the forgetting and of the duality of the world and such right and so it can be really heavy so we come here with a purpose and intention and with that purpose and intention you know we make particular agreements this is what I'm planned to do or this is like say if we have family here you know I am coming there to do xyz and I'm also going to help out this person this person so we're meeting the soul family to um, satisfy some sort of agreement or contract, right? And then of course, we make mistakes, we're in the forgetting, you know, it's a dualistic world, we forget of our own divinity and such. And so we create karma. And that creative karma is more, it, again, it it is, it brings us back here to this experience, right? To heal or fulfill or close some sort of karmic loop, right? And so with this said, this particular, vi the vibration of nine is essentially anchored in this, the mastery of all earthly lessons, right? And so it deals with karmic loop, loop endings, right? Where with that vibration of nine, we all know of the, the conclusion and the endings. And actually, let me look at my notes. So, you know, I'm not just <laughs> rambling and I can be kind of concise here. So yeah, so with the vibration of nine, there it's anchored in enlightenment and ascension, right? And this is really heavily connected to the universal spiritual law. So, you know, like law of attraction, law of assumption, law of vibration, all of those, right? So all of that is, all of those laws are encompassed within this vibration of nine. So there's that connection with that, right? And so again, as I mentioned, there's mastery of earthly lessons, right? And in this particular case, Saturn has some sort of like influence or connection to the mastery of the lessons offered. So a lot of, you know, if you follow astrology, which most of you probably do being um, watching this video, is that Saturn is the planet that is, and governs like our karmic lessons and our purpose and what we're here to do. And it's the disciplinary energy. It's the author, uh, author I'm not even going to try to pronounce that word right, right now, but <laughs> it's the planet that keeps us in check, hence the Saturn return, right? And so with this, I just think it's, it's so profound with the nine degrees, um, the three occurrences, the three meetings at nine degrees and out of two out of the three meetings are with Saturn. Right. So we're dealing with the endings and conclusions. We're also gaining a higher expect uh, um, a higher perspective or expansive viewpoint. So now I'm connecting in the Jupiter with Aquarius. And there's also the sense of duty and calling. And what I really love that I came when I was doing a little bit of research of this vibration of number nine, there's a website that I love called Sacred Scribes. And one of the keywords was light working. And then the other one, it was humanitarianism. And I was just like, <laughs> light working. Like I like that as a verb. And I really feel the energy right now is essentially like it's the activation of light workers. And again, this might seem woo woo. What I'm saying, this might seem new agey, but here we are, right? And so not everyone's feeling probably the intensity on a very, confrontational level as some of us and I feel like highly sensitive people like high sensitive people people who's you know they're open as far as like their clairs and people that consider themselves at light of, as light workers and are here to really really share and be of service 
we're feeling this, right? This is the time, this, not, this nine energy is really activating and bringing to life these, th- these contracts, right? These like, and in, these intentions and, and purposes that we came here in this lifetime to do. And so this number nine, the nine vibration is a strong message to fully devote yourself to your life mission, express your unique true self and weave love into every aspect of your life. Trust that you will be able to find a comfortable balance between your maternal, family, and spiritual paths. So this is all coming full circle, right? And with that, with this 999, essentially, I feel this week is really closing some karmic loops and soul soul agreements have been satisfied. Not every single one, but there's a major soul agreement that is being satisfied or has been satisfied right now. And we're calibrating to this new vibrational set point. So the baseline for where our frequency is anchored is higher, it's set to a higher caliber, it's set at a higher bar. And that's where we are right now. And so just glancing at um, my notes here. Yeah, so expect to receive some sort of clarity, some very strong, profound revelations right now. Yeah. And I feel, I honestly feel that I've covered a lot. And at the same time, I'm like, it's late. I feel very spacey right now. And I should be going to bed. I can't believe I actually made this late night recording work. So thanks for hanging out with me. If you made it this far, I'm just looking at what else is coming forth. Yeah. We have early in the week on February 27th, we have Mars, um, squaring Jupiter, and that is uh, a conflict in action, right? So that's bringing some sort of bringing us to an edge of where we need to move, like physically move beyond the, the edge, like do something different. So I'm feeling the Jupiter innovation card. And then also, um, yeah, on the day, again, coming back to February 28th, that's a big day. Uh, the moon will peak at her waning uh, gibbous phase or disseminating phase and Libra, right? So restoring balance and harmony, restoration, healing. Uh, I think I mentioned to one of my clients, uh, being that we start the week with the moon in Libra or entering Libra early in the morning, that's a good time to bring, start to bring in good vibes into the home, like saying, going to get some flowers or lighting some nice incense or, you know, putting on some essential oils, but like really getting into the Libra energy and just really creating the high vibes for your home space and even your body, your temple, maybe playing some really nice music in the morning um, or before you go to bed, maybe treating yourself to like a nice herbal bath. I really, really need to do that. That's like on my list. And so, yeah, and then we close out the week with Venus squaring Uranus, right? Venus in Aquarius squaring Uranus at, at, in Taurus at 19 degrees. And so that to me feels like some sort of liberation, right? Um, which it's, you know, that's a conflicting um, connection, but it will be, it will feel good at the end. I feel like there's like, again, there's like a big release and there is soul agreements being satisfied, karmic loops coming to completion. Like there's not no, no reason to keep going around the same cycle and the same loop, no looping. Now we're doing the expansive spiral and moving through life in that way. So I'm going to end this here because I feel that I've been very clear, surprisingly, hopefully. And so if you like this video, of course, like the video, please subscribe. If you haven't subscribed and you enjoy this content, share with someone, please comment your experiences below. I would love to hear how you're doing, how you're feeling, what the changes are for you and what you're looking forward to. Thank you as always for being here with me. I hope you have a beautiful week. Take care.